Hello, Winter here, and welcome to Feed the Beast Academy. I know that this is Poet's channel, but there's a long story, okay? Poet works full time, and he doesn't have a whole lot of time to make a ton of content, and I don't make YouTube ch videos anymore, so I figured I would help out. Uh, Poet also doesn't like modded Minecraft, and I know a lot of you guys have been wanting a modded series. So, here we are. I'm gonna basically, uh, do a walkthrough of uh, most of the, the things in this mod pack to uh, show you guys, if you're new to mods, how to use them. Now this is Java Edition Minecraft, and you can find this mod pack on the Feed the Beast launcher, and the link for that will be down in the description below. Um, so I think we should get started. Uh, so it says to get started we need to read our quest book which is right here this is the nice thing about feed the beast quests uh it gives you a quest book to sort of helps walk, guide you through all the different mods so this first episode is going to be just basically up here in the feed the beast academy and then once we uh go to the surface we're gonna be done for the day i think so that's just today's episode uh so let's start by opening up this quest book so right here, already we got a tutorial for this quest book, which is kind of cool. It says this mod pack has lots of quests to help teach you how to play. To open them, click the button in the top left of the inventory or use the quest book item. Left quick click on a quest to open it. Most quests are invisible until they are unlocked. Dark gray quests are locked even if they're visible. You have to finish every task for a quest to complete. Hover over the task to see what you have to do. Some quests may have rewards after the quest is completed that you can claim by clicking. Those are really nice ones. They give you things. I like things. When a quest is completed, the next quest will unlock. So you'll see these little lines and they'll connect them. That means you need to do this one before, it's a coyote. before you can <laughs> do this quest over here. Uh, once you've completed the school, several more chapters will be unlocked. You can open them by clicking on them from the chapter list on the left of the quest menu. So they're right over here in the quest menu. Some chapters may have sub chapters, which you can open by hovering over the main chapter and then clicking the sub chapter from the drop down. Not all chapters have sub chapters. It's a lot of information. So we're done with that. Exit tutorial. Yes. Welcome to Feed the Beast Academy. Learn how quests work. So, so this mod pack is dedicated to teaching new players how to play modded Minecraft. These quests will guide you step by step on how to progress the most common mods. It works best with the guide, which will have more in-depth descriptions on how mods work. Click here to read more. Oh, that's basically the same thing we just read, so we can close that. All right, so this is kind of cool. I can't, what, what? Oh, are we done? Check mark. <gasps> Quest completed! In case you get stuck somehow, you can use the reset school button to generate a new school and restart the quest. Well, that's kind of cool. That must be the reset school button. If you don't want to sit through the tutorial, you can click the quit school button to go straight to the overworld and begin playing normally. E. So they are, right? Okay, we're done? We're done? Can I go in? No. Modded Minecraft has a lot of new blocks and items, so it's hard to remember all the crafting recipes. Luckily, the mod Just Enough Items, which we usually call JEI, will help make that easier. On the right side of the inventory is a list of every block and item in the mod pack. Hovering over one and hitting R will show you its recipe, and hitting U will show what recipes use it. At the bottom of the inventory is a search bar where you can type the name of an item to filter the item list. You can double-click the search bar to search that item in your inventory. Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. So what do I have to do? Learn to use JEI. So do I have to, oh, I have to click this. Well, that's pretty easy. Mods add lots of new blocks and items to the game. So remembering how to craft them can all can just be hard. That's where the mod just enough items comes in. JEI is the mod that adds a list of items on the right side of the inventory. So your JEI can be found over here. You can filter the list item list by typing the name of the item at the search bar. So hovering over an item will show the item's name as well as what mods it's from. So this is an iron chest and it's from iron chest. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty easy mod to remember the name of. Uh, click on an item or hover over it and hit R to see how to make it. You can also right click the item or hover it and hit U to see what recipe uses that item. Certain recipes can accept a type of item rather than a single specific item. This is called the or director. Di this is called the or dictionary. Blah, blah, blah. So that's cool. You can hover over an item in a recipe to see what type of item can be used instead of the specific one shown. JEI is not limited to showing only crafted recipes. You can also see 
what you get from smelting, drops from animals, the location of ores, and much more. I don't think I've ever used it for a location of ores, so that's interesting. If you have all the items you need to craft an item, you can hit the plus button to automatically move them to the proper slots in the crafting grid. I do that all the time because I am lazy. If you are in the crafting tables GUI or graphic user interface, it will also work with three by three crafting recipes. You can hover over an item and hit A to bookmark it, pinning it to the left of the inventory until you unpin it by hitting A on it again. You can click the button on the bottom left to hide the bookmarks. So this is how you hide them. But yeah, you can have like, if there's something you're constantly looking at the recipe to because you can never remember, like this, uh, the piston. I never remember how to make a piston. I think I've made so many pistons and I never remember how to. <laughs> I always forget. Yes. Okay, so are we good now? Yes. Now I can go in. Look at that. So we're going to introduction to storage. Oh, open the different storage blocks. Okay, so these are the general storage. This is a regular chest. A wood to iron chest upgrade. And then they have, this is a diamond. Uh, it's from iron chest. It's a diamond. I think this is the biggest one you can make too. It's the diamond chest. It has lots of storage. And then you go over here and this is called a stall stall. Small storage crate. It's from, a oh no, it's from actually additions. I was like, axe? That check mark with the green axe means that you can, um, you can pick that up with an axe. Or your hands, because I, I don't have a pickaxe uh, right now. See, like here, if I'm looking at this marble, it says I need a pickaxe, but I don't have a pickaxe. This one says to use an axe, but I don't have an axe, but I can use my fists apparently to pick it up too. That's why there's a green check mark when I'm looking at it with bare hands. So there's that. All right, let's look at our book. Introduction to storage. We did that. There's a lot of mods that allow you to store items easily. We did that. So you can just click and drag to move these around. I think you can zoom out and in too, so that's kind of cool. If you roll your mouse, it'll do that for you. So iron chests and storage crates are good to, for storing large amount of items. They work like regular chests, but they store a lot more. They both come in tiers with more expensive tiers and storing more. So the more, like, more it costs for you to make something, the more it's going to store. Open the chest to the right and take out the wood to iron chest upgrade. Right click it on the chest to upgrade it to an iron chest. All right, so I have to take this. So let's say you made this uh, upgrade and then you just slap it on a regular chest. Oh, look how it shows you. Use the right mouse click button and just go, there you go. It's a iron storage chest. Uh, punch a cobblestone storage door to take some out. I'm gonna read this quest book first. Storage drawers are great. This is what I use. I love storage drawers. It's my favorite thing to store things in. Storage drawers are great for storing a large amount of one single item. Right click a drawer to store an item you are holding and hold right click to store all of that item in your inventory. Left click a drawer to take out one of the item it has and sneak left click to take out a whole stack. Hover over the tasks to see what they are and what they need. So, so I just have to like take one out, like one. I took one out. Take one of those. Click the right click the iron nugget in the bottom right of the compact drawer, then punch. Okay, so right click this. Wait, wait do I have to have an open hand? Wait, no. <laughs> what am I doing? I don't understand. Okay, I just I took out. I took out this and it gave me a, ooh, it gave me a storage disc. Interesting. So I'm going to read my books because these, I like the more, I like this right here. It explains it more. Refined storage allows you to store a massive amount of variety of items. Items are stored in discs. So it's like a computer. It's like a, basically a computer that you're storing items in, which themselves are stored in disc drives. You can access items and discs by opening the grid. Instead of being limited by the amount of slots an inventory has, digitally stored items only depend on the size of the disc used. The last quest gave you a storage disc. Open the disc drive and insert the storage disc then open the grid and take the water bucket inside that's kind of cool so also like if i wanted to like put this back in here i just right click right click there we go so okay do i put it in here yeah the disk drive so it says to put the disk drive in okay <laughs> can i just pop it in there put it in here oh did i have two drives 
Maybe I had two drives. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, so I put the discs in here. This is where the discs go. And then the grid allows you to access items that are stored in discs, which themselves are stored in disk drives. Oh, look, there's like a little disc there. Look at that. It's a little light on and everything. It's kind of cute. And that's a bucket. I don't know if it's a bucket of water, but all right, I took the bucket. Right click the bucket on the full tank to take us. Oh, so we're on a different quest here. Fluid storage. There are some mods that add ways to store items, and there are also mods that add ways to store fluids. Blocks that store fluids usually have the word tank in the name, so you can just search for tank in the JEI to find them all. The portable tank has multiple tiers, which allow them to store more fluid. Right click the portable tank on the left to take out some water, and then right click on the one on the right to fill it. All right, I think we can do that. So if I right click on this, it takes it out, and then I can put it over here. Yeah, I did the thing. So I think we're done in storage now. Yep, we're going to automation. It Oh, look at the little arrows. They tell you where to go. In case you're confused, technology and automation. The glowies mascot. All right, so what does this say? Simply storing items and fluids is not enough. To properly automate, you have to move them around automatically. The simplest way to move things around is ducts. Items are moved through the item ducts and fluids are moved through fluid ducts. Servos are used to pull from blocks and item fluids will automatically go into the nearest block that can store them. Alrighty. Filters can be used to specify what is allowed to enter a block through the duct. You can open it up to set its whitelist or blacklist. Items on a whitelist are only items allowed to enter, and items on a blacklist are the only items not allowed to enter. Set the right filter to be a whitelist for ores, set the middle filter to be a whitelist for dirt, and set the left filter to be a blacklist of ores and dirt. All right, flip the lever to turn on the servo, and items will be pulled out of the crate on the left and go into the crates on the right, depending on how the filters were set. So very left, we want it to be a blacklist of ores and dirt. Oh, so this one. Do I, oh, I need to grab things, don't I? I think. Was I supposed to grab? How do you do this? No. White blacklist. Oh, okay. So I do need to put things into the filter. So we don't. I think just two would work. That's diamonds. Okay, so then we uh, set this one. Oh, it's gonna show me how to do it. Uh, set this one as a filter, a whitelist for all of these. Do whitelist, one, two, three. <gasps> I did the thing. We're gonna set this one as a whitelist for dirt. And then this one's gonna be a blacklist for everything. Uh, okay, so this, I think I have too many. Oh, it's like I'm in creative mode right now. So I have like multiple of each. All right. So I did the thing. Oh, now I have to flip the switch. So now, oh, look at this. You can see them go through. That's so cool. And see, they're skipping those ones because they don't need to go there and they're going to the ones they're supposed to go to. That is so cool. I did the thing. Okay, now what? Why do I have a wrench? Like item ducts move items, fluid ducts move fluids. Portable tanks can be set to automatically output to the block underneath. Use the crescent hammer on the top of the portable tank to make it move the water to the tank beneath it. You can't set servos to function when they don't have a redstone signal by opening it. Oh, you can set servos to function when they don't have a redstone signal by opening it and pressing the redstone dust button to the right. Do this here and set the servo to either ignore redstone or low, which means no signal. What are we looking at? The redstone on the right. Ignored. Okay, so it's ignored, and then I hit this, and then... <gasps> I did the thing. I did the thing. Look at it go. <laughs> I get a certificate in automation. Go me. Okay, what's all this? Making energy. Most technology uses... Mods use RF, which essentially is just electricity. Generators are machines that make RF. The coal generator uses furnace fuel, such as coal, to generate RF. 
Place the coal generator down on the block of iron and give it some coal to make to make it generate RF. Uh, so I put this here. And I put the coal in there. And now it's doing the thing. What? What are we doing now? <laughs> what? <laughs> While you can technically get away with having generators directly next to your machines, it's not the best idea. Flux ducts and other power cables allow you to connect generators to machines at a distance. Place flux ducts down on the wool. Just one? Just I just put one? One. <gasps> oh. What's the next one say? Generators make energy, but you also have to use it. There are plenty of machines that use RF to perform a variety of functions. The redstone furnace is a, in particular uses RF to smelt items. It functions almost exactly like a regular furnace, except it runs on RF instead of coal. Place the redstone furnace on the block of lapis lazuli and use it to smelt some pulverized iron. I Boop. Oh, do, do I have... What? Where do I get pulverized iron? <laughs> Wait, what? Do I just... Can I just put it down in there? I'm just going to smelt regular iron, if that's fine with you. Oh, I don't have... How do... do I, have... I don't know. Where's it called? I don't know. Take four ore from the ore chest and smelt them in the rest of Okay. Okay. Where's the ore chest? One, two, three, four. It's not pulverized. It's regular iron ore. I hope that's okay. No? Uh, so... <laughs> Where? <laughs> Where... Is this iron you speak of? Because I don't, I do not have it. <laughs> oh no. Hello. Are you in the storage chest? Was it in here? No. No. I don't have, it didn't give me pulverized iron. Did I, did I break something? Where's the pulverized item? <laughs> iron. It's a take four pulverized of iron and not and what? Okay, hold on. Let me read. Take some iron ore out of the ore's chest and smelt them in the redstone furnace. I did it. Oh, I had to take them out. <laughs> We're done. Yay, we did the thing. It wants me to leave. Yay. We are going this way. Astral sorcery. This section has less in-world information. You will have to rely on quests using JEI. So in other words, they got to this point and they're like, yeah, I don't, I don't have explanations for anything. So yellow. Astral Sorcery is a magic mod focused around the harnessing of the powers of starlight and constellations. Just go here. There we go. Yep. A lot of recipes in this mod require starlight in addition to items. When you're just getting started, the only way to use starlight is to place a regular crafting table near a floating crystal. The resonating wand is used to activate astral sorcery blocks. While holding it and running around in the overworld, you can also see the location of rock crystal ore that spawns underground. Place the crafting table on the wool block near the floating crystal and to craft and craft the resonating wand in it. You can see the resonating wand's recipe by searching for it in the JEI or clicking the resonating wand in the task section of this menu. That's a lot to read. Okay, so I need I'm just going to, I'm just going to take all this. <laughs> just going to take all of it. It's fine. Okay. See, look at that. So cool. It's like, ah, light right there. Okay. So we need to make ourselves a resonating wand. There it is. Astro sorcery. So I can just push this button and magic. The It's all in here. It's cool. I'm just going to grab that. Okay. So now what do I got to do? Uh, the luminous crafting table allows you to get starlight just from being able to see the night sky, though it will also be powered by a floating crystal if one is available. To craft items with the luminous crafting table, you have to give it the items as usual, and it must have access to the amount of starlight depending on the recipe. If the luminous crafting table has items and starlight is required, right-click it with a resonating wand to craft the item. Okay, so I need to make a luminous crafting table. That was stuck. Okay, so we're going to search luminous. There it is right there. I see it. Crafting table. 
Bink. Bink. Great. Does it change at all? Wait. Where is the... Hello? There we Oh, jeez. Okay. Illumination powder is just one of the many items you can make with starlight. You can place it down anywhere and it will act as a light source and it doesn't take up a block, a block space. Place luminous crafting table on the quartz block and craft illumination powder according to its crafting recipe. All right. Place it down here. And what? This right here, illumination powder. Plop that on there. And then I have to like, what, click it? Is it done? Oh, it's done. <laughs> Can I put it down? Oh, look at that. It just makes like like little glowy things. Oh, I'm going to make that stuff. Look at this. I'm going to put it over here. That is so much better than a torch. This is like way better than a torch. It just glows forever. Oh, I need me some of that. I need that in my life. <laughs> Okay, so I think we're done here, and they want us to go to Batania now. My astral sorcery. I really liked my time spent here with you. I'm going to make everything really glow before I leave. All the glow. Oh, I'm done with glowy stuff. I like that so much better than torches. Okay. Batania. Batania is a tech mod disguised as a magic mod. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> With it, you will use flowers to generate and manipulate mana, which can be used to do various things. Alrighty. Magical flowers are created in the petal apothecary. Fill it with water using a water bucket. Make and then throw the petals according to the endo flame's crafting recipe. Then throw it in a seed to craft the flower. You can either just throw items at the petal apothecary. <laughs> just chuck them. Just chuck them at it. Or right click with the petals in hand to place it inside. You can hold sneak and then right click with an empty hand to take the last item back out. The endo flame generates mana when a burnable item is thrown on the ground near it, next to it. If it is placed near a mana spreader, the mana will move to it. Once you've made the endo flame, place it on a lightest, the lightest grass block, throw some coal nearby and it will begin to generate mana. Okay. So let's just take all of this. Blah. Okay. Now, craft the flowers into petals. That's easy. All I have to do is just throw them in here and it's psh, psh. See how easy that was? Fill the petal apothecary with the water bucket. There's already water in it. It's over here. Ta-da! Drop one gray, one red, and two brown petals in. So, one gray, one red, to brown. So if you look at it, you, it tells you right here. So if I look away and I look back at it, it'll tell me what petals I have in there. So there's two brown, one red, one gray. And it says, oh, but you still need seeds. Then you just throw the seeds in. And I got one end of flame. So right there. Oh, no, I have to chuck coal at it. There it goes. So now I have to, what, what, what are we doing? Hold on. <laughs> Moving and storing mana. Mana spreaders are used to transfer mana and mana pools are used to store mana. Sneak right click with a wand of the forest on the mana spreader, then do the same on a mana pool to point the spreader at the pool. Any mana inside the mana spreader will be sent to the mana pool. Now this is super confusing. I do know that I've struggled a lot with Batania. So I have to hit shift, click it, and see it's how it's highlighted. Then I need to shift and click this, and that will point it. It'll automatically gather this because I, it's within a certain amount of blocks, I think, from the endo flame. And see, it's all this right here. This is what the mana looks like. So, oh, now, what? Okay, let's read the book. <laughs> let's read the book again. Crafting with mana. Some items can be crafted by throwing them into a mana pool that has mana in it. This uses up some of the mana. Throw an iron ingot into some mana and it will be turned into a mana steel ingot. That's simple enough. You just go do to do. Is this thing not generating any more mana? There it is. Bet it is now. There it goes. There we go. It's as easy as that. If it doesn't have enough mana, it will just not do anything. So if it's not, if you throw something in these pools and it just doesn't do anything, it just means you need more mana in there. 
Are we done? Oh, do I have to make more? There we go. <laughs> I made two. I did the thing. Elven trading. Get Elementium. Later on in the progression, you will eventually make a portal to Elfheim. This essentially works the same as crafting with the mana pool. You can throw certain items into the portal and you will get other items out. Any item you throw into that that is not a part of the recipe will be lost. So, like, don't ever throw your most favorite diamond pickaxe into the portal because they will keep it and never give you anything in return. Craft an elementium ingot by dropping two monosteel ingots into them. Okay, so just chuck these. Psh, psh. And then they just chuck it back out. Well, that was pretty cool. So are we done here? Yep, go to the overworld. Now that you've completed all the tutorials, you can head over to the overworld and start playing for real. Yay! So, okay, what I'm gonna do, what I recommend is before you start actually uh, working on any of the mod uh, quests, I recommend going to the overworld, finding a good place to base and uh, setting up a base and doing a lot of strip mining. You're gonna want a lot of resources to use mods. A lot of the mods require tons of resources. Save everything, save seeds, save dirt, save every plant you pick up off the ground because a lot of them are used in a lot of mods. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to the overworld. I'm going to find a good place to base. I'm going to build a base and do some strip mining. And we will see you guys next time in Feed the Beast Academy. Bye-bye.